This is a tutorial for OCR Gateway GCSE Physics and this will cover section P1F, Transmission of Data. We're going to look at uses of infrared, analogue and digital signals and optical fibres. So we'll start by looking at infrared and here we've got some pictures that show uses of infrared. Remote controls for TVs and um, DVD players using infrared signal. Um, less commonly used now but short distance data links so we've got here a laptop and if you look here there's a little um, infrared sensor and transmitter there and you could put that next to um, in a mobile phone for example to send signals over short distances. Um, down here we've got infrared sensors and thermal imaging you might remember from P1A and both of these work by detecting body heat. Okay, so on to analogue and digital signals, and we're going to look at how we can describe each signal, and we're going to talk about the advantages of digital signals. A digital signal can only take two values. Um, it can either be on or it can be off. We could also express that as a one or a zero. Examples of a digital signal are Morse code, that was discussed in an earlier tutorial, and optical fibres also use flashes of light or infrared. These, the light can either be on or off, which is why it's a digital signal. An analogue signal, on the other hand, can have a whole range of values. And this is represented in this diagram here. It can have the maximum value, it can be off, but it can also be any one of these values up to the maximum. The way of describing that is by saying that analogue signals have a continuously variable value. We can also say they can take any value within a range. Learn one of these, whichever one you find it easier to learn. If you find it difficult to remember these descriptions, when you're asked about a digital or an analogue signal, or when you're asked to describe them, you can draw these diagrams and it's very likely you will get marks just for drawing one of these. So why is there a move to digital and why have we switched to digital TV broadcasting rather than a traditional analogue signal? Well, the first answer is to do with this. It is easier to remove noise from a digital signal and that gives us a better signal quality. So what is noise and why is it easier to remove it from a digital signal compared to an analogue signal? Well, let's say that this is our digital signal that's being transmitted down here. And we're going to add noise to that. Now noise just means background interference or damage to the signal that can be picked up as the signal is travelling through the air. So our noise is just going to look like this. So what's our signal going to look like once it's picked up some noise? We've still got our digital signal, but instead of looking nice and flat, it's going to have noise on it like this. Now with a digital signal, it's very easy, even though we can see that there's noise there, it's pretty easy in most cases to see whether the signal should be on or off. So the receiver and the decoder at the receiving end can look at the receive signal and say, OK, this is what it looks like, but I know that actually it should look like this. Excuse my drawing. So... For a digital signal, it's very easy to get from a damaged or noisy received signal back to the original signal, which is why the signal quality is better, so you get better picture quality or better sound quality on DAB radio. Okay, now let's compare that to an analogue signal. So here we've got our analogue signal, and we can see it's not either on or off, it's taking a whole range of values there between the maximum and the minimum. And again, we've got our noise, which we're going to add to that signal, and I'm going to attempt to draw that over here. Okay, so I hope you get the idea that this 
is this signal now with some noise added. Now, for the receiver, it is much more difficult to see what the original signal should have looked like. So, it's, very, it's actually quite difficult to remove the noise from an analog signal and get back to exactly what the original signal looked like, which is why on a, um, a traditional TV signal or traditional radio, FM radio, the signal quality and the sound, the picture quality and the sound quality, sorry, are not quite as good as that on digital. There is one situation in which analog signals may give better audio quality than a digital signal, and it's in the situation where there is a lot of noise. With an analog signal, no matter how much noise there is, there will always be a signal that the, that the receiver can broadcast. Our ears are actually very good, at, and our ears and our brain together are very good at decoding sound, even when the sound quality is very bad. So even if the sound quality is very bad, we, we might still be able to pick out words and what, what it means. If there is so much noise on a digital signal, and I'll just sketch it again down here. So this time we'll have a huge amount of noise. And we'll try and draw that the other side here. So our receive signal is going to look so damaged that it's actually very difficult for the receiver to work out whether at certain points whether a signal should be on or off, then it will just broadcast nothing. So if a digital signal becomes so damaged by interference and noise that the receiver can't work out whether the signal should be on or off, we'll actually get patches of silence. So to you listening to the signal, it will sound like it's cutting out constantly. Another reason for switching to digital is this idea of multiplexing. Multiplexing just means that more than one signal can be sent at the same time. It's much easier to do this on digital or using digital than it is using analog. An example is a comparison of DAB radio, digital audio broadcasting, and FM radio, which is analog. And DAB has more stations available, has less interference with other broadcasts, it may give poorer audio quality compared to FM, and this is what was discussed uh, a couple of slides ago in the case where there's so much interference and so much noise that, this, that a digital signal could cut out. A disadvantage at the moment is that not all areas are covered, so you can't receive all stations in digital format anywhere in the country. Okay, so if you have cable TV or if you get your internet using Virgin Media, then you will receive your signal down one of these, which is an optical fibre. Optical fibres carry digital signals. What they are is they're actually very fine glass cables and the signals, the digital signals sent along them are pulses of visible light or pulses of infrared. The signal travels along the optical fibre by total internal reflection. Now this was covered in an earlier tutorial, so if you're not sure what that is, go back and have a look. Fibre optics are really good because they carry information at very high speed. So they're very good for high speed internet. They allow transmission of data using light. They allow multiplexing, so that means that more than one signal can be, they can carry more than one signal at the same time. And there's little interference, so there's very good signal quality using fibre optics. And that's all for P1F.